All right, what's going on guys? Kosher here at the Lion's Den. We're gonna do a fun series, I thought, which is basically gonna be uh, my top most used and unused pieces of gym equipment. So each video will be separate. But we're gonna start with the most used first. Uh, if you guys haven't already checked out my gym uh, tour video, we'll link it up right here, but I am the owner of the Lion's Den training facility in Colmar, PA. Uh, primarily we do strength sports, right? Strength and conditioning. Our main thing is just strength. We love strength training. So. Uh, it's a garage kind of style gym. We have a lot of power lifters, uh, uh, strong men, not that many weight lifters, uh, but that's kind of what we do. We just get people strong here. So first piece of equipment, it was kind of funny because it wasn't on my original list, uh, but then Coach Matt behind the camera brought it up and I was like, duh, how did I not think about that? So it's right here, the lap pull down, all right? If you guys are involved with strength sports or strength training, having a jack big back is never going to fail you. Uh, or something that you know you, you want to be worried about. So training your back in here, we have someone on this basically all day, every day. We've had to replace cables on here just from being used so much. Uh, and a lot of people always ask where I got this lap pull down, what uh, you know make is it or model, and I have no idea, but I know that it's amazing. And I actually got it from a CrossFit gym in the corner because nobody was using it uh, for like a hundred bucks. And I'll tell you, it was the best hundred dollars I've ever spent. It's been with me for about four or five years now. Like I said, the only thing we've had to do is basically replace the cable, which just costs a couple bucks on Amazon. Um, we have all these different grip attachments, which I've talked about in other videos. Uh, so, you know, it's used here all the time, every day. One of my favorite pieces of equipment. Uh, so if you are a strength sport athlete, you know, definitely get in your lat pull down work. Oh, hello there. That was my Sam Brown impersonation. <laughs> Guys, second is gonna be the SSB bar. We have two SSB bars here right now. We got the Rogue and then we have the Titan. And Titan makes a lot of crap, but I'll tell you this, that uh, SSB bar from Titan has held up for pretty much all the lifters in here. We all use it. The padding I think is actually better than the Rogue padding. I've had to replace this padding many of times by just refilling it uh, with a pool noodle. So just go to the pool store, grab a pool noodle, cut it up put it in the pad, where I haven't had to do that once with the Titan SSB bar. Uh, so this one's gonna be a little bit more expensive. Uh, some people love it. Like I said, I think the Titan's actually better, but if I could go back and spend even more money, then and I'll probably eventually have this bar, it's gonna be the uh, Elite FTS uh, Yoke Bar, I believe it's called, which is just their version of an SSB bar. So one of my favorite bars, I've made videos on it before, and it's definitely one of the most used bars here uh, for strength sport athletes, used for squat variations. Um, and even some other things like good mornings, uh, you know, some uh, half field squats, whatever. But I highly recommend if you guys have a garage gym uh, or if you are a member of a gym that has SSP bar, get familiar with it and incorporate it into your training. Oh, I feel like I'm being pulled between two pieces of equipment. What could they be? Oh, oh we have the, the lying hamstring curl in corner number one. And then we have the mighty hack squat in corner number two. Obviously, both of these are used for training the legs, and uh, it's a tough call. It's a tough call to make. I don't know. I equally love both of these. The hamstring curl has provided me about another three inches on my hamstrings over the last year and a half, and the hack squat has made me question my life and its existence, but it does have some benefits because my quads have turned into not only quads, but quadzillas. Um, now we have Coach Tanya over here trying to hold back her laughter because I suck at making jokes, and I'm going to ask her. What's your tail on the tape, Tanya? What do you think, brain superior, the lying hamstring curl or the hack squat? Your job depends on it. I would say it's 50-50, guys. What the heck? You have to pick. I think. What do you think it's 55%? Probably this. You think? I think well, so. Why do you think? Just because I think um, the hack squat is, it does get used a ton, so maybe like 5% is the only difference, but I feel like the hack squat is such a push mentally when you're actually doing it. This is more just like a straight up burn where that I feel like people do tend to shy away from a little bit because it's definitely pushes you to your limits a little bit more. I actually, sense? I actually 100% have to agree Good. with you on that. Like sometimes <laughs> like even looking at that hack squat right now, it's like. <laughs> yeah, it's like you just dread it. I don't want to do it. Yep. But I can always hop on here yes. and start really light and everything just feels really good. And then just get enough of a burn exactly. and then be done with it. So yep. I, I agree. So I guess we have to say that this one wins out of the the pull of the uh, lying hamstring curl and the hack squat. But they're still tied for a number three placing here on our video. 
All right, so if we had to pick a number four, and this really isn't any order, it's just number four on the list, it's my lovely trap bar. This was actually gifted to me by a man named Adam Paul, uh, who lives in the dumpster of Sacramento and uh, outside of the Upland Frank Gym. He is in no comparison the man that Alan Thrall is, um, but he's a close uh, bottom of the 100. So. Uh, th this bar is absolutely fantastic. I love the Rogue Trap Bar. I would recommend getting this bar. It's perfect in terms of the specs, great quality, great knurling, uh, and just an awesome deadlift variation. The other reason I think it's used so much in here is because the learning curve is super easy. So you can basically just hop in, make sure your hands are in the right spot, and you can start deadlifting, okay? Whereas uh, conventional or sumo is gonna take a little bit more uh, work to get the technique down. Uh, so we love using it for people who are just learning and just want to deadlift. We, they don't really care if they want to do sumo or conventional. They just want to lift some weight. Uh, we also do it for people maybe who have some sort of pain that they're working around and for whatever reason the trap bar uh, works best for them. So we actually have about four trap bars in the gym, different kinds, but out of all of them, this is my favorite and kind of just the best bang for your buck on the market, I would say right now, is gonna be the Rogue uh, Trap Bar. And uh, we put some videos up throughout this where I've talked a little bit more in depth about the Trap Bar and why I love it so much. Uh, I think it's an underrated uh, bar and it is used as one of the most equipment uh, pieces here. So, number five on my list is going to be the Functional Trainer from Body Solid. I picked this bad boy up years ago. She's a gem. I wash her, shine her every day. Put a little bit of wax right on these uh, nuts and bolts here to give her that sweet, oh, <laughs> that sweet glide. Feel that sweet glide? Wow. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, uh, I would say someone's always on the cable machine. Uh, so this is primarily used for any sort of accessory movements, right? Or uh, arms, whatever. Uh, but I think just having some sort of cable stack in the gym that you train at or in your garage is gonna be a wise investment uh, just for hitting some smaller muscle groups. Like I said, getting accessory work in. But uh, this video by no means was in any specific order. Uh, we kind of just were talking and, and just had a fun question of, what do you think is the most used piece of equipment in here? Outside of obviously like dumbbells, the barbells and plates, okay? Because people use this stuff all the time. Um, but those were kind of like our top five. Some of them were in a competition for one, so we included that there. Uh, but I think if you have those pieces of equipment, you're in a really good place uh, for strength training and some hypertrophy stuff and accessory work. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, make sure after you're done watching this, you watch the most unused pieces of gym in, in, in here because there are a couple uh, that we had purchased and they really don't get any uh, TLC. Uh, so maybe after this video, they'll get more, but if not, I think it's kind of like the rite of passage, you know, when you're a gym owner, you collect things or you think you're, you're going to use them a lot and they don't, or vice versa. You don't think something's going to use as much and then also you're like, wow, people love that. Uh, so you either need more of it uh, or you just know that it's a great piece of gym equipment so you can share videos such as this so you guys can learn. So check out the next video. Uh, that's what we're going to go into next. But until then, stay a lean, mean, strength machine. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.